All right, what is up out there, podcast family? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Peter Jameson. But before we drop in on this episode, I want to say a quick thank you to some of our show sponsors. When it comes to CBD products, there's a bunch of people getting into the industry for all the wrong reasons just to turn a quick buck, quick pound, or whatever currency they use where you live. I mean, you can buy this stuff everywhere, from vape stores to petrol stations. I'm pretty sure my local animal sanctuary even sells it. Don't trust a guy who's selling lottery tickets one minute and then telling you the benefits of CBD the next, or somebody who's just operated on a cat and then wants to talk to you about CBD. You have to be careful where you get it from and who's making the stuff. After all, you are going to put this inside your own body and you have to make sure it's the best quality product you can get your hands on. That's why we recently partnered up with Natural Leaf CBD. Natural Leaf CBD is a family-run business based in Cheshire here in the UK. They're in the market for all the right reasons. Unlike petrol stations, vape shops, and animal sanctuaries, they know what they are talking about, and in my opinion, have the best CBD on the market. All natural leaf products are full spectrum, which means you get the full cannabinoids and not just the CBD pulled out of the crops. They are organic and vegan friendly, so you are aren't going to be ingesting any pesticides or fertilizers. They use a CO2 extraction system to ensure you get a clean product with a guaranteed strength. What's on the bottle is actually what's inside your body. Sustainability is a big part of the business too, so all their bottles, tins, and packaging is 100% recyclable. If you want to help support the podcast and help support a legit company, then give Natural Leaf CBD a try. You can head over to their website. It's www.naturalleafcbd.co.uk. And if you enter the promo code HKTPOD10, that's HKTPOD10, you can get 10% off everything on the store. All the links for the website and the social media stuff is all in the show notes below. So we got your health sorted. Now it's time to talk to you about our next sponsor, which helps you keep your belongings spick and span. This product's, uh, this sponsor's product, sorry, has been a life changer for me. Gone are the days of dragging a dirty bike through my house and filling the washing machine with a pound of dirt. The Works Hydro Shot has allowed me to clean my bike kit and sometimes body easily, quickly, and efficiently while still at the trails. What? How do you do that? Well, the Works Hydro Shot uses a power share battery and draws fresh water from any source, no matter how remote you are. And if you live in the UK right now, you will know that there is an abundance of water. Most puddles are a couple of feet deep. So you can literally dip the Hydro Shot hose into a stream, a river, a puddle, or a bucket and get cracking with washing your stuff. The rotating head allows switching from mist through to pulsating sprayer capable of eliminating caked on dirt. It's available in numerous models, including a full kit version with a soap bottle attachment, a body only version, and a new brushless model. The HydroShot is capable of producing up to 10 times the power of a normal hose, but it's not too powerful that it's gonna blow your bearings and skin to pieces. The HydroShot includes the 20 volt power share battery that can be used across their whole range of works 20 volt tools. So share the batteries, save money. The HydroShot is available to buy from select retailers only, which includes Amazon, Argos, Halfords, Toolstation, and their official eBay store. Or head to works-europe.com. A little birdie just told me that on the eBay store, there is a bit of an offer too, where the HydroShot... Can't remember the model number, but it's £99. And last but not least, our long-standing show sponsors, Saks Underwear. Saks just started shipping their spring 20 colours and models, and it includes their all-new Hyperdrive. Yes, Hyperdrive is a series on Netflix featuring a bunch of actors nobody has ever heard of, but it is also the name of their new compression fit model. Hyperdrive features the all-new ballpark pouch and is the perfect balance of both fit and function. The Hyperdrive is also moisture-wicking, odor-resistant, and it has a hidden waistband stash pocket so you can stash your keys, phone, or 
performance enhancing drugs. Sax underwear starts at just £20 and is available from all good outdoor, bike, skate, snow and fashion retailers or head to saxunderwear.com. And speaking of sax, every episode of this podcast, we give you a chance of winning yourself a pair of sax underwear just for spreading the love. All you have to do is spread the love somewhere, either through iTunes, uh, do a social media share, just make sure you tag the podcast in it so I can see it and make a mental note of your efforts. This week's winner is an Instagrammer whose handle is at Adam Barker 13. So Adam, if that's you and you're listening, reach out and I will ship you some sacks for free. Okay, wow. So on today's episode, I was joined by Peter Jameson. Peter first came on the podcast almost exactly a year ago after launching his entirely self-funded film called Passion, which is a free ride mountain bike documentary. If you want to learn more about Peter's story, though, I suggest you go back and listen. That is episode number 66, where we go a little bit deeper into some of the sacrifices he made, including living in a tent to get his work noticed and springboard his career. Um, Peter just launched another self-funded film called Tribe which aims to connect viewers to the various riding communities across North America. And it is sick. It features some heavy hitting athletes too, including Ethan Nell, DJ Brandt, Cade Edwards, Reed Boggs, Matt McDuff, and Brett Reader. My favorite section has to be the Brett Reader section in the house. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Uh, The coolest thing for me though about this episode is how Peter's career has taken off because of enormous amounts of work and dedication uh, to his career. You can tell right now he is full of energy and amped on this film. And to be honest, he's like a different guy. Uh, I remember the first time we sat and chatted, he was pretty shy, pretty quiet, but now you can tell he's full of confidence, he's hyped, and this could be the most stoked slash hyped podcast ever. Anyway, uh, enough of me waffling on. Let's get into it. Hand over to Odub little bit of Zeb and get into this episode, folks. Enjoy. Welcome to the Hook It podcast, endorsed by at odub underscore 23. Uh, add me, tag me. Follow, follow me. Please follow me. Dropping in, P- Drop PJ, in. Peter Jameson. <laughs> almost uh, almost a year since we did the last one too. Dude, I think it's no, like over 13 a months. Yeah, 13 months. months almost exactly, I would say. it's. Uh, we're sitting here, it's February 20-something, right? Uh, February... 24th. Uh, 24th. <laughs> and I have a feeling that the last one was probably around January 20th was when I yeah, had yeah. that last film come out. So, yeah, like almost exactly Maybe. just over a year. So stoked to be back. Thank you. No, thank you, man. Again, dude, always amazing when people reach out and, you know, suggest that they come on the podcast rather than me trying to like be like, oh, you should come on and do this thing. Whereas you're like, let's lay another one down. Got another film coming out. We want to talk about it. Dude, so, psyched, man. Stoked. It's opportunities like this that make uh make everything possible and share the stoke and yeah hype that uh, this opportunity came together very kind very very kind of you so what's been going on man since the last film so yeah the last film dropped a year ago the uh passion yeah passion right yeah and uh, i feel like from the outside looking in your career kind of hockey sticked after that is that is that <laughs> accurate or what it was definitely pretty crazy. Uh, like thinking about the that, like sitting in a chair talking to you a year ago versus talking to you now, like the situation that I'm in, like I couldn't be more grateful and it's totally different. Like a year ago, I was just sitting down talking to you like, oh, like 
screw it. Like, I'll just, like, release this movie that I made. Like, and at that time, I wasn't even going to release it. And then Ethan, whose house I'm sitting in now, yeah. was like, dude, you can't do that. Like, you have to release it. Like, released it, went super well. And then basically since that last time that I talked to you, I was on the road, like, every week. Wow. Like, we had that last conversation. And then literally, like, I think the day after, maybe two days after, Brett called me and was like, yo, dude, you want to come to Sweden for two weeks? And I was like, uh, sure. And then, like, a week after that, I'm, like, in Sweden. And Reed is like, yo, dude, you want to come to Barcelona? And I'm like, sure. And, like, at the time, like, I... Flew to Europe yeah. with a thousand bucks in my account, like not even enough to like get a plane ticket home. Wow! And it was just like hoping I had one paycheck that I was hoping would come through from a video I did like a few months before, yeah. and it like came through like right at the right time, and I was like just able to get through like the whole trip. <laughs> and then like since that, like I got home from Barcelona, yeah. got home, was home for 24 hours. My parents were like, "Hey, man, like." Uh, sorry, you're home for like 24 hours, but we're going to like sell the house. Cause like my sisters had moved out and I had moved out at this time. So I was like home for 24 hours and was about to literally pack up and drive to go move in with Brett. Mm. And, and they were like, yeah, you should just like take all your stuff. And I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm home for literally 24 hours after being gone for almost a month in Europe. Yeah. Drive 20 hours to Tennessee, film a video, with Dakota nor in drive immediately after that to LA, 30 hours across the whole country, fly from LA to Crankworks Rotorua, where I shot for a track in 510. Yeah. Got back from that, went to Utah for like two weeks, then I went and stayed like a week with Carson, and then drove up to Brett's for the summer. Wow. And yeah, so like right after we last <laughs> talked, it was just like kick it into third and just rev limiter. Like dude was... that's crazy so like <laughs> even so before you put the film out you know you were doing bits of filming work you know understand that but that yeah. film felt like it was like boom here i am on the scene do you know what i mean and it and it, honestly yeah. it's weird because like i've obviously watched all your social media and stuff and it felt like it did feel like things just kicked into gear like you said and it's just been like full gas ever it, since like holding back dude, it's crazy for, for sure i think it was like it was cool too because like like the name implies like passion it was just something that i like did for fun it wasn't like i'm not like oh this is going to be like some huge marketing ploy like i'm gonna like just be all busy after this i was like i don't know like i mean i wasn't even gonna put it out and then no. it just like all worked which is like it's so like i'm so grateful that it happened that way um and yeah, it's insane. Like I said earlier, it's like opportunities like getting to talk to you and like all these other people who are like, yo, like who's this guy like making this video? And then it's like, yeah, it all like happened. Or it's like even like um, around the same time we chatted, I did an interview with TGR, Teton right. Gravity Research. Yeah. And then like 10 months later and I'm shooting as a photographer on their like next movie. Wow. Like, which is crazy to think about. It um, just goes to show though, dude, like if you put yourself out there and you do the hard grind, it yeah. pays off right like fuck it totally paid off for you this whole thing just yeah. like paid off and i know you weren't thinking about it like that at least it doesn't sound like it but yeah crazy you know what as, as well i know we you know we don't know each other that well or whatever but you're like a different guy sat there you're like <laughs> do you know what, like dude you're like a different guy like soup like way more confident and just like i don't know take that as a compliment yeah. please That's, but like yeah, you're like a different guy wow yeah it's like, it's not easy, too. I think that's another thing that, like, I mean, it's obviously hard to put myself in, like, other people's shoes, like, mm. looking at kind of, like, how things have changed for me. But I would say, too, it's, like, just because, like, that one video came out and, like, a lot changed for me, it wasn't like it was just that video. It yeah. was, like, from the time I was, like, 12 to, like, 18 and just, like, working my ass off. Like, yeah. every day shooting photos, working on videos, like... It was like hard, like this head down, like grinding as hard as I can. And then thankfully it just popped into gear. But and still now it's like since then, it's like, yes, there are opportunities that come up. And I'm so grateful that like it's basically all of my friends and like people who have believed in me that have presented me with these opportunities. Yeah. And then I'm grateful that I just have to keep my head down. And if I just work as hard as I can, it seems that things have worked out. So, yeah, just grateful that people have believed in me to present me with the opportunities to showcase what i can do amazing 
dude, I'm so stoked for you. Like, legit, I'm so stoked. And when I saw you had a new film coming out, obviously I knew. It's like, let's get back <laughs> on here. Let's just chat. I'm just genuinely, like, super invested in what you guys, what you're doing. I think it's Thank amazing. You, man. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I feel bad. I've I only just watched the film. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll dude. watch it. And I just haven't got around to watching it. But Dude, no stress. I literally uploaded the final, ver- the version you watched. Yeah. I uploaded that, like, three hours ago oh shit oh maybe i watched a different one i watched the youtube link though that you sent me first oh okay the vimeo link okay so that was v that was v1 that was like before i left for new because i just got back from a month in new zealand Uh before i left for that trip i was like i just need something exported to send to people yeah so that's the link i sent to like you um like emil brett like all the people who are in the movie are like involved or people who i wanted feedback from from Mm. i sent so like i that link that version got sent to about like 60 people okay all right well i'm sorry i only just got around to doing it no it's been flat out here too it's been wild 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 start to the year but yeah yeah in a good way but some not so good but hey it's all good (laughs) that's life it's a roller coaster you learn you learn from the the lows and the highs in different ways so so where where are you living right now then so i've been like since rampage i guess Uh, I've just been kind of around Utah area, mm-hmm. um, so I've been at Ethan's house. Okay. Um, so he, myself, DJ, and Reed have this project we're working on. So Ethan just kind of let me kick it here and been helping him out with this, like some stuff, digging in the in the yard. Um, I basically I've just sat in a room since Rampage working on this movie. So thankfully, Ethan let me stay here and just grind. I bought a $100 desk from Home Depot, and just which is what I'm sitting at right now, and basically sat at it for 10 hours a day until Christmas okay. uh, and just grinded as hard as I could. And yeah, so I've just been here in Utah. It's awesome like having the opportunity to hang around Ethan. It's, it's crazy where he's at in his career. Like When we started hanging out was June of 2017 before he was like, on Fox or like mm. Monster, or like had just gotten on YT and like hadn't even done Rampage yet. And then six months later, and it's like, oh, he gets third at Rampage. Yeah. And then 10 months after that, and he's on like Monster and like every company ever. <laughs> and now we're sitting in this house that he's had the opportunity to acquire. And uh, it's really sweet. Like ha- seeing that transformation firsthand is yeah. really inspiring. And I'm grateful to have the opportunity to learn from him and what he's done. And yeah, he's. And like the most one of the most supportive friends i could ask for so right yeah so, grateful he presented me the opportunity to stay here yeah that's really cool man it's cool that like all it feels like a lot of your friends are also maybe on the come up a little bit and you're almost you know yeah. going, following that same trajectory it's super sick i, I think yeah. one thing that really stood out in between since we last spoke was you know you did like the presentation to cowboy of the yt bike and stuff and <laughs> i know it's just like one thing but i was like fuck boys out there getting after it <laughs> That's cool. Dude, that was so funny. I didn't even know. Like they asked me to like do the job, mm. so I shot like YT's the Jeff C portion of their catalog for this year, and then their the Dirt Love, so their 29er trail bike and hardtail. Okay. So I shot those, and then they're like, "Yeah, there's this one other shoot um, that we would like you to do as well." And I'm like, "Okay, like I'll do it for sure." They're like, "It involves Zinc and Rupert Walker, like two of my favorite people ever." Okay. And I'm like, "Okay, I'll do it," but I didn't know anything about it. Like nothing. Wow. And then Zink and I were on this TGR shoot, which is in the middle of December. Um, and he's like, yeah, man. Like, so we're doing the shoot in New Mexico next week. And I'm like, yeah, do you know anything about it? He's like, dude, it's with this like crazy MMA fighter. I'm like, really? He's like, dude, you should look at him on Instagram. And he has like 2 million followers or something. And I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like what? And then yeah, like five days later and I'm on a plane to New Mexico and like we end up at this insane place. Um, Wow. Yeah, crazy. Like I'm so <laughs> like it's crazy. YT presented me with that opportunity, and I was yeah. very grateful. But man, it, that guy was crazy, man. Really? And then while we were there, he was like, "Hey, like you guys can't tell anybody this, but like I'm fighting Gregor." Oh and shit! Yeah, like, it was. It was. Yeah, you're right. So you, yeah. Was, I mean, when I saw it was when he announced it, but you did it all before that, obviously. So yeah, yeah. Shit. So we're there, and he's like. I'm fighting McGregor, and we're all just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so it was cra- dude, the craziest experience ever. Wow. Super, super grateful. And he got his up. ass pretty yeah. much whooped. <laughs> 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 
but that, that's how it goes, I guess. I'm not the biggest MMA no, me uh, really. fan, but I guess that's how it goes sometimes. But, <laughs> but yeah, still, still psyched. Like watching those guys train, it was like him and like six other buddies just like going at it hard every day. Right. And like even Zink got in the gloves and was like training a bit. But man, like they were just like kind of sparring. But even watching like that kind of force firsthand is yeah. gnarly, man. Yeah. Yeah, TV it's, does not do that shit justice at all. No, like, no. it's really intimidating. Like, like, it's, yeah, it's crazy. You're like, here, just have the bike, let me take some photos and get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I just want to play sure. with bikes in the woods, get me out of this octagon, octagon yeah. thing. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, please don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> don't say the wrong thing. Oh, man. For sure. So when did the, uh, yeah. when did the idea to do another film, like, happen? So I would say the idea started at the Return to Earth premiere for me. Okay. Like, because I had filmed with Brett for, so like that Vernon section of the film, which is sandwiched in the middle, that was supposed to be something else. Right. And then Brett and I were like, uh, we don't really know how we feel about like the way this is going. Just like from a creative standpoint, we like kind of went into it without like a specific vision. Mm-hmm filming so i filmed for like four weeks i had like a lot of footage like a full hard drive and i was like man this is like really good content like i don't want this to go to waste so then i was like thinking about like other ways to like kind of make some lemonade out of these lemons i had and i was like all right Uh, and then literally like a week after we were like we should probably just like take a break and like figure out like a good creative direction Mm -hmm. we went to the return to earth premiere in vernon in the town we live or I guess those guys live. Um, and yeah, it was sick. Like they have a sweet trail organization there. So it was like a packed theater. Casey got up on the stage and spoke and it was sick. Cool. And I remember like sitting there watching that and being like, damn, it would be sick to do another movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because we actually hosted the uh, a premiere of that in Sheffield too, where I'm from. Yeah. And we hired this like old school, like, like a theater where they used to have like plays and stuff like that. And it is the most beautiful location to have a film. Like it's super old school, like real Victorian looking like building. Dude, it was the best. We packed it out like 300 people. And, Mm -hmm. and that movie just got me. I I was like, I'm like, fuck, I want to, I want to make a film. This is amazing. This is, (laughs) you know, it's such a good film. Yeah. Anyway, they killed it. I was like the music tracks and seeing like so many of the friends riding in that was, is super inspiring and mm. got the juices flowing. And then uh, I hung out. So that like got the idea flowing, but I wasn't like, okay, I'm going to start editing like right now. Yeah. Um, and then the day after Black Sage, or I guess Proving Grounds rather, because those events happen at the same time. Um, Clay was like, Clay Porter was like, yo, you want to like come hang out at the house while I edit the highlight video? And I'm like, sure like i guess so it's like yeah i just went over to clay's house and um, my buddy jasper was there who kind of helped him out for mo- like a good portion of last year on some projects mm-hmm. and i like walk into his apartment and there's just like all his movie posters no way like, on the walls and i'm just like whoa dude like this is <laughs> sick and then like i was just helping him in photoshop like do some titles for the highlight video and just like watching him edit and stuff and i was like man like I'm just going to do it. And like, <laughs> at this point I had like thought I like had the idea of doing something like kind of community based. Cause I'd spent so much time in Vernon that summer, yeah. so much time in Utah and then so much time at Highland. It was like, it'd be sick to kind of like portray how I perceive those locations. Um, and yeah, like the next day I just booked flights to Highland. I texted David and I was like, dude, what are you doing next weekend? Cause he was going to college at the time. Okay. He was like, Oh man, like let's go film. Like oh, he, was in the fir- he was in the first film too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he was just finishing up his degree. So we we waited for a long weekend, um, and I he was like, "Yeah, I'll pick you up from the airport." So I spent like five hundred bucks or whatever it was, bought flights from Vegas to Boston. He drove like fourteen hours or something, picked me up at the airport, and we just like went hard filming, like because right. we only had three days. Yeah. So I had like, and I've spent so much time shooting there. Like I know the ins and outs. So I had like a very specific shot list of like what I wanted. Okay. Um, and we just went like grounded it out. And then I got back from that and it was like two weeks ish before rampage. And I was just like trying to shoot like as much as possible. Uh, and then yeah, shot after rampage as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was return to earth and then yeah. 
getting the opportunity to hang out at Clay's apartment and seeing kind of like his just inspiring, right? As well, so inspiring. Like everything he's done, I was like, man, this is like super badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, dude. Well, obviously, I just watched the film, so it's really fresh in my head. (laughs) I mean, what a it's called Tribe for people listening. Uh, it's out on the when is it out? 26th. 26th. So two days from now. So it's out now, yeah. basically, for people listening, because that's when yeah, this episode yeah. will go live. Um, where yeah. where, uh, where are you leasing it? So Vimeo for free, again. Cool. Link in uh, the show description for everybody. So boom, make sure you listen to this, and then go and watch the film. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of mentality with that. Like, a lot of people are like, you're going to do YouTube, you're going to do Vimeo again. Like, what you going to do? Mm. Um, and YouTube would have been sweet. It just got a little hard with some of the music like the artists were like yeah you can like use the tunes but obviously it's like a self-funded film so i was like i don't have really budget for music and they're like okay like that's fine like will dorado for example is like a fairly large artist but they're independent and we're like or i believe they're independent but they emailed me back right away and they're like hey pep stoked if we use your music just send us a link of the film i'm like okay sick but even though they're, they're like saying that you know or same with the mystery lights the mystery lights like i had a huge amount of emails back with their manager neil who helped it help me out big time with two of the songs yeah. um so even though they're like yeah you can use the music it's hard to go through the publisher and get it cleared on youtube Call so it. like i have permission but then it, even if it's on youtube i don't want to like release the film it's live for 24 hours and then gets taken down yeah yeah um so then i was like okay i'll do vimeo and i was like a little bit bummed about it but then i've been real big into surfing lately mm-hmm. um I don't surf at all, but I'm just big fan of same the sport. dude. I yeah, same. I watch like surf <laughs> film, surf documentaries, but I can barely yeah. swim. So yeah, I, <laughs> I just think it's sick, like how much history they have in their yeah. sport, and it's like super far along. So it's cool, like seeing that and being like, whoa, maybe like mountain biking in like hundred years will be like mm. that, you know? Mm. Um, but anyway, Elude was this new surfing movie that came out. Okay. Um, and Stab was promoting it, which is a big surf publication, as well as a bunch of other websites. And they just did a Vimeo release. Okay. And that was like, okay, I'm like, if this big surf movie that everyone's posting about was just Vimeo, like, I'll be fine. And it worked fine for Passion just doing it on Vimeo. So, uh-huh. yeah, Man. Vimeo again. And, yeah, I mean, it might not get on the recommended of other people's YouTubes or whatever, but I'm sure the people who need to find it and want to watch the film will find it on there. So, yeah, yeah it'll be good. Sick. You know, now you've said it, you know, like maybe inspired by the surfing side of things. There's yeah. a there's a section in the film which is oh, da, 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 da. there's a few things I want to talk to you about within the film. Yeah. Okay, so it is it could be Jackson's section, Jackson Riddle's yeah. section, which is like a yeah. really soft piano music. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just like bangers, and there's a front flip off a yeah. like down a, a step down front flip thing. Yeah to super soft piano music and i was like that is sick <laughs> so good so that Dude, that part so especially like stood out that. really no Dude, mate i was all I was over that so worried about that man because at first i had a whack tune to that right. part like, <laughs> what was honest, it <laughs> just i had french street music playing oh wow like a live band off the side of a road <laughs> So that's how I had that originally cut. Okay. And I was like, because the rest of the film is kind of just like not too out there, you know, like everything is just like not standard at all. Like it's creative and the music, it's like what I would like to listen to, yeah. but there's nothing like too out there. And I was like, okay, I want like one kind of like slower cinematic section. Um, in part, like speaking to the surfing thing more mm. and like a big inspiration for the whole film and particularly that part was done, which was John, John Florence and Blake, CUNY's first film that right. they made in 2012 or 2013. Yeah, I've not seen and the it, intro, the intro is 15 seconds of piano music. Okay. Just 15 seconds, but it's like three heater clips, and then it's like cut into like a gangster tune. Nice. Um, okay. And like obviously that's like not how that plays out, but I, I was like, and I didn't really even watch that movie until after I'd cut the section, but I like cut it to the slower music and then saw that they did it, and I was like, ah. It'll be good. So good. <laughs> but I'm so, so good. I you liked it. Yeah, that, that, that too. especially stood out. Dude, sure. nice. That gets me stoked, man. <laughs> I'm fired up on that. <laughs> That's like one of the parts I was worried about. <laughs> okay. Oh, no way. Well, well no, it's definitely, definitely my bag. I loved it. Dude, there's so much stuff. I mean, the whole film, you know, was 
really good. And what, what I was going to ask you too, the, the first film was a little longer. So your first one was around 30 minutes? 20. Yeah, 27? 30. 20, yeah, okay. It was 29 and 30 seconds or something like okay. that. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, th- so this one's like, what? The one I've watched is 17. 17? Yeah? Like, the exported version, I think, is like 17 seconds, okay, 17 perfect. minutes. So it's yeah. pretty short, but mm-hmm. what's the what's sort of like the thought behind it being like that? Is it a case of, I don't know, I'm going to let you freestyle on that actually because it is a relatively short film, but yeah, it's yeah. packed. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a matter of like looking at the content. Like when you watch Passion, you know, there's like a lot of talking and like that's fine. Like kind of more traditional documentary, like however you'd want to put it. But I think like I haven't done any math behind this. But if you kind of look at like the amount of clips in Passion versus the amount of clips in my current film, Mm. the amount of clips in my current film, I'm almost positive has to be more. It's just the way it's cut is like way different, you know? Yeah. And I just kind of wanted... Like, I didn't put a limit on length at all when I was editing it. I was just editing each section, and I was like, okay, how long does it need to be to portray, like, the exact vibe and, like, get the point across that I'm trying to get across with the vibe and kind of, like, the attitude of all these different athletes? Um, And I'd cut that for, like, the Vernon section I cut first, um, and I cut half of it. So there's the two songs in there. Like Brett does the fronty uh, in Innsbruck. Yeah. And then it cuts to that second song, which is Morning Light by Will Dorado. And I found that tune and searched for it for a long time. And that was the first part I ever cut. And that part was three minutes. Right. And I was like, okay, well, that's a little bit too short. But then I had all this other action I had shot with the boys just for fun. So then I kind of like combined that to make a five-minute section. I was like, okay, this is sick. There's like a good bit of action and like a good bit of lifestyle combined. It was like five minutes. Yeah. And since I had cut that, like, first, I was like, okay, like, if I could aim for, like, three five-minute sections, like, I think that'd be pretty good. Um, and, like, like I was saying, how I had that shot list going into the Highland shoot. Yeah. I wasn't like, okay, need five minutes of footage. I was just kind of, like, thinking about, like, okay, which parts of Highland do I need to portray? And then it, like, thankfully worked out when I was cutting it to be around there. Like, I was like, okay, I need footage of, like, Tilton Diner, like, the local diner you're going to eat at if right. you go to Highland. Or, like, Chase's Garage, where I, like, I basically lived outside of that garage, like, when I was 17. Or, like, all these other little aspects of Highland. Or the Sherwood session, like, that final shot of all those guys dropping in in the trains. Like, I have vivid memories of that. Like, seeing people drop in at the end of the year since I was, like, 12. Like, I was like, I need, like, that, like, that specific shot I need. And thankfully, like, all my friends were around riding who have known forever. I was like, yo, guys, can we get a big train going? And, like, boom. And it just worked out perfect that, like, my friend Chris Eldridge, who's, like, a local at Highland, just does a sweet tuck no hander on the middle jump, like, in the (laughs) middle of the train. And I'm, like, just freaking out behind the camera. Like, this is, like, exactly what I've seen every year my entire life. Um, So, yeah, to answer your question, it's like, yeah, it it was kind of like – I kind of got started with the footage I had yeah. um, from filming with Brett. That was around five minutes, and it seemed like a good length, not too long, not too short. I didn't have to include, like, too much random talking. Um, and, yeah, and then I just kind of, like, went with that and tried to, like, get close to that for the following two sections I filmed. Okay. And, yeah, happy with how it worked out. And I, sure. well, the other thing, too, is I didn't want, like, there is one formal interview with Brett, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't want it to be, like, passion where it was, like, then just – blatantly talking i wanted it to be very implied like the vibe and just like have the footage tell the story yeah. rather than necessarily like uh thought out interviews okay the, that's another section that i absolutely loved of this film was the stuff at brett's house yeah what is it like being around that house dude because there's a <laughs> there's a clip in it again like a speaking clip an audio clip where it says like we like i think it might be matt or brett i can't remember says we breed talent here or something yeah, yeah and you yeah, can yeah. tell it's just a rad place to be and just to <laughs> live out of so what's it like dude what's that environment like being around guys like that all the time man it's incredible i want to just start by saying i don't know if brett will ever listen to this but he better do enough anyway. <laughs> yeah uh, he and i talk enough anyway but thanks to him for presenting me with the opportunity to spend last summer at his house that was definitely life-changing being able to witness how hard he works how hard casey works matt Braden. so how many people uh, are living in that people. house like so when I was there, um, Max Langel was a kid who kind of like floated in and out for a little bit. He was injured. Uh, and then Braden Barrett Hay okay. lived there all summer. Yeah. Matt McDuff, uh, Brett, and then Casey. 
Brown. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then Tom Van Steenbergen and Bass both live just in town. So it's all, we're all within like five minutes. Right. So like we go in on a trail ride. Okay. Let's text Bass or like, we're going to ride bike park. We'll text Bass and Tom. Like, so it's that, that's the house, but then there's, there's other people around. Yeah. Um, and there's just a really good community there in the Vernon area. Um, and man, it's incredible (laughs) (laughs) having the opportunity to like for one, watch how hard Brett works. Okay. Like, is life changing. So the the jumps and stuff are pretty much in the yard, right? Yeah, I don't want to say too much about okay. what's in the yard because okay. there's like <laughs> I showed like a little bit, but yeah. you 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 have no idea really, really based on like what I've shown. So like, yeah, there's stuff in the yard for practicing. Okay, that's basically how it you goes. know this is but super like, random actually. So there's a clip in the film where he's got the uh, the digger JCB thing with the rotating yeah. arm. I can't remember yeah, the name yeah. of that. The it's, Yes, exactly. So my buddy yeah. works for that company. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he randomly texts me one day, and he's Swedish, and I live with him in America, and he texts me one day like, oh, I'm at this guy's house. Apparently, he's a really good mountain bike rider. I was like, no shit. <laughs> That's the <laughs> weirdest thing ever. I'm like, a friend of mine actually lives in that house. He's called Matt. Go say hello. But then he ended up only staying for like one day to deliver the actual product, and then other people yeah. stayed to fit it. So yeah, it's crazy. Exactly. So weird. Dude, that's anyway. so funny, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like having the opportunity to see how hard those guys work is seriously inspiring. And for me being like I was 19 living there last summer and like, I mean, Brett's just turned 27. Casey's around the same age, same with Matt and Braden, and they're further along in their careers and have seen a lot. So having the opportunity to hear their stories, let them mentor me a bit and yeah, just spend a bit like four months together was so helpful. And I definitely think I matured a lot and learned a lot about just like how to take care of myself in the right ways. And yeah. just kind of like the ways of being a professional bike rider, or just kind of a professional in the industry, really. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's insane. It's the most inspiring environment ever. And we definitely have fun. Like, I think the film shows that like picking Matt's car up with the excavator, like there's a random bird just stuck in the shop. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then there's also hard work too, like Brett washing the excavator or like just digging the jumps all day. So it's, yeah, it's a fine balance of work and play. But yeah, I'm just once again super grateful for the opportunity to have witnessed it. And it's the most inspiring environment ever to be in, I would say. Amazing. And the film definitely portrays that. Even, you know, again, me as a, as a watcher of that film, coming away from it thinking, I want to know more about that as well. Like that looked like a yeah. cool environment to be in. And yeah. so did uh, did Matt get you on the old cold exposure stuff, or did you? Uh, oh, dude, <laughs> don't you... worry, man. We call it BX, or there's a creek there. Okay. Uh, so there's a creek, and we would go almost every morning. I would say maybe two <laughs> times a day, depending. Okay. Stack a few more rocks, get the pool a little bit deeper. Yeah. And then just a little bit more comfortable. It was real fun, like during Big White, the slope style event that Tom hosts. Mm. Um, a couple of the boys came back to the house post that event and like bringing Carson and those guys to the, to the cold pool was funny to watch, <laughs> man. We go in like every day, get like, even like, like I was so not about it when we started, but then like mid summer, I was kind of more accustomed to it, but right. watching those guys never done it before hop in was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny. He's like yeah. Matt's episode when he came on this is still one of the most downloaded episodes ever, which is really cool. But yeah, we spoke at length about that because I'm really into that stuff as well. And oh, yeah, awesome. it's cool. It's cool. Um, so the first film was entirely self-funded. Is this, is Tribe the same gig too? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. So what's Because <laughs> it's so strange watching a, it's so strange watching a film and there's no sponsors titles. It's, yeah. it's cool. Like, it's really cool. So has <laughs> yeah. there been like, was there opportunity to do it or... Not really. Like I, That's like with crazy. passion, I had one company called me like literally a week before it came out okay. being like, Hey, can we buy this? And I was like, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> but like with this, I don't think I even, I didn't even try. I didn't even think about it to be honest. Cause I was like, okay, I already have this footage with Brett, mm. which I mean, I just paid for myself to like food and stuff. Like yeah. it didn't really cost me much, you know? And then I just bought flights to Highlands uh, we stayed in Aaron Chase's basement, so I didn't have to get a hotel. Okay. Shout out to Chase for letting me and the boys stay there. Uh, and then Highland, or sorry, Utah rather, I was just kind of here anyway filming. So 
it like it, it realistically like wasn't that expensive and then thankfully the music worked out pretty well yeah um so like yeah, it was i mean obviously if you were to like do the hours of the normal day rate it would be like pretty insane to produce it but i mean i'm doing it myself it's fun and yeah it just worked out like i did all the coloring myself the sound design like there's it, thankfully i have like i've worked through enough self like single like just me producing pro- projects yeah where i have the skills to kind of like not to maybe as well of an extent as other people but i'm able to like i'm able to do the sound design i'm able to right. color it i'm able to edit the project yeah and that's just kind of like what and it's good practice made. surely too right like you're For always 100%. evolving and yeah doing doing a bad job huh. yeah so that's a, yeah that's just what made it possible to do it myself and yeah, I don't. I think going into the future, I I won't be doing self-funded ones now. But I, I mean, now that I've done two, I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready to like get some budget and like really step it up. Yeah. But yeah, but, you feel yeah. like if you had, is there anything you haven't done in the film that budget like held you back with or uh, not? Like now, I'm starting to dream like kind of big. Okay, so now we like, want helicopters, right, and explosions yeah, and like, smoke I had and a stuff. <laughs> on my last shoot in right. New Zealand. Okay, there you like, go. It was, fucking badass you know <laughs> like, like casey and i did like i just shot i just shot a video of casey brown for kind right um and yeah we did a sunrise shooting a helicopter like in New Zealand. <laughs> the sickest thing ever so like if i'm gonna do like and that was for a web project not even like a movie wow so like if i'm yeah. gonna do like another movie it's like you gotta make it kind of gangster you know <laughs> 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 well okay we want the next one's gonna be like die hard or something with explosions yeah, so- and guns and all sorts of cool shit that's going on that's yeah. cool no amazing. doubt amazing sure. um <laughs> <laughs> the writers list too is stacked for this film it's it's stacked you've literally got well, i mean anyone who's anyone pretty much in free ride at the moment is in that film so it's cool as well like these guys are just buddies and you know you're just filming with them it's it's, it's so cool let me just read it's though. Fun. I read for the listeners like who's in this film because if you don't already go and want to watch it, then uh, so Ethan Nell, DJ Brand, Ian Carpenter, Cade Edwards, Reed Boggs, Jackson Riddle, Matt McDuff, Braden Barrett, Hey, Brett Reader, David Lieb, Aaron Chase. I think that's pretty much everyone. I think. Yeah, Tom Tom Van. I don't know if he said his. No, maybe right, I should Tom add Van. that to the credits. But yeah. he has like two or three clips in there. But man, it's crazy that you say that because it doesn't feel that way. No. Like, if you were to tell me that that would be the writer's list for, like, passion when I was, like, 17, I'd be like, holy shit, dude. But, like, <laughs> it literally doesn't feel that way at all. Like, the, like it's just, like, the homies. Like, there's – it's oh, it's weird to think about, too. It's, like – it's crazy. Like, I was texting David, yeah. and I was like, man, I kind of put a lot of clips of you in the trailer. He's like, yeah, man, I'm stoked. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, man, the writer's list is crazy. And I'm like, hmm, now that you mention it, like, yeah. yeah. But it's like, it's no different. It's like, I don't know, like, Kate, I don't know, like, super well, but we've had the opportunity to, like, spend a bit of time together. But we'll, like, DM on Instagram, comment on each other's writing posts, or, like, yeah. just, like, friends with Brett, or, like, Tom and I have shot before. And hmm. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy that it's, they're just kind of friends. And it's good not to become good and difficult not to become jaded to that. Okay. Um, is you definitely like they're professional athletes and I need to be as supportive and helpful of their careers as I can. Yeah. As, a, as just as a friend. Um, yeah. so it's always important to like pinch yourself a little bit and be like, wow, you're like working with like the best guys in the industry right now. Like you need to be as helpful as you can to them. It's kind of crazy when you say it like that too, because you almost do have a responsibility to pr- portray them in like the best light you can doing the best oh, yeah. shit. Like I never really thought about it like that, but yeah, like that is, down to you pretty much yeah it's like yeah for sure and that's like why i'll like like that for example that youtube link i sent you mm. like i filmed i that was two months ago yeah like making sure everyone's like okay with it and like stoked on it or like i send that link to a meal and like 20 minutes later he sends me a video of like he and his friends in a hotel room watching it that's like that's where i'm like okay i'm like needing to make sure people are stoked on this yeah because i'm if i'm making something that kind of for lack of a better phrase, like the free ride athletes is like not a whole, but like a good part of the community mm. aren't stoked on and not going to be like pumped to promote it. Then that's really bad. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to make sure like that people watch it and are like 
stoked after. Yeah. Like, I don't want to watch something and the boys are like, eh, whatever. Like, I want to watch something and they're like laughing or like hyped. They're like, yo, I'm stoked on that clip. Like, like be, yeah, like just something that people are stoked to promote and be behind. And that's definitely my responsibility and something that I have to be careful with. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, I'm enough. I'm what I'm invested enough with a lot of the crew to get the feedback needed mm. to make that possible. Mm. So, so what, uh, what else is going on with you then, dude? Like, what, what have you got coming up? What are you working on? What's next? This seems like <laughs> a wild, a wild ride right now. You're just like hanging off the back of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, uh, like I just kind of mentioned briefly, I got back from like a month in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So I went to Hawaii for a week with Ethan, DJ, and Reed. And then I shot with Ethan, DJ, and Reed for two weeks in New Zealand. Okay. They left. I changed my flight and stayed for a week with Casey to work on this Dakine project. Um, so the stuff with Ethan Reed and DJ, I can't talk too much about. Mm -hmm. but that may or may not be the next movie. Okay. Uh, and then Jesus. the Casey thing. Yeah. And then the Casey thing uh, is just like a Dakine project. Kind of, we started filming before Proving Grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so we filmed like kind of for training uh, and then filmed at Proving Grounds she crashed and now this is kind of like her coming back like riding where she grew up okay. um so that will come out beginning of may i believe mm -hmm. uh and then right now uh i don't know how much i can say about this but tom van seenbergen flies in in two days okay and i'm in utah so yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going down all right uh so that's a thing and uh so you headed I mean, out to rotorua or no no, I couldn't. So I was going to. Yeah. So my initial plan was go to Roto and then maybe go to Queenstown again after with Emil just to ride. Right. Um, and then the budget got approved for this upcoming project. So uh, I'm staying in Utah, but it's okay. I'm um, sorry if you can hear those dogs, That's by cool. the way. Those are Ethan's puppies. Um, uh, but yeah, so got those projects going on. Some yeah. stuff with Reed. Um, and then... What else is going on? It's kind of crazy to like think about. Um, it, it's kind of tough because there's there's always projects like going on that you're budgeting, sending to brands, like kind of feeling out, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you never really know until like until they're signed. like, okay, we're doing this, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. right now my like kind of April May is like pretty open, but there's like five projects that could like go through like that at any minute, you know. Cool. So it's sort of like the only things concrete are like Black Sage. Um, so I'll be going to that, um, hopefully, and then just other events throughout the summer, hopefully Innsbruck again. Uh, there's a cliff slope style event at Highland, which I didn't go to last year, which a few people weren't too pleased with me about, but I was just busy at Brett's house and didn't want to have to leave. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was asked to go to that like three months ago. Mm. So <laughs> I was like, if they're asking that far in advance, I'll go. Okay. Um, Jeez. So I go to that and then, yeah, it's like crank works, um, Proving Grounds, the U.S. Open of Downhill, which will be a big bear again. I'll go to that. Yeah. Rampage. So it's sort of these, like, few – oh, there's Big White, uh, Tom's event. Uh -huh. So there's, like, kind of a few events that will, like, follow along the calendar, and then I just have a bunch of other projects that are just puzzle pieces kind of waiting to be kind of, like, dropped into place. Amazing. Um, and then, yeah, I've been doing a bunch of stuff riding myself. That's the thing. Lately, You're actually been... making time to ride your own bike too. Which is good. Yeah, so that's been sick. Jackson and I pretty much have ridden together every day the last like two months or so. Like every day that I was editing this film, like he and I would go and ride, and then I'd go edit for like six hours. Um, we just got back. I was at Woodward West with him for four days. Okay. We were just training, riding it. Or not training. That's a bad way of putting it. We were riding for fun, having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> you need so, to ride yeah. there, man. Hey, eh? like it, it. Otherwise, you just fall into that trap of it's just becoming work. Like I, I definitely yeah. feel that from what I do. I know it's, it's very different, but you know, I'm in the bike industry, but sometimes you need to go ride a bike and go, okay, this is why we do this. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's, sometimes it's, it's stressful and hard. And I think too, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's nice, nice too for perspective. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like if I'm just kind of sitting at a computer for 10 hours editing, mm -hmm. I'll think in a very technical aspect where I'm like, Oh, maybe like that clip should go there. Or like whatever I'm doing or, yeah. And I'll just kind of like lose sight of like the overall reason of like why I'm doing something for sure. where like I'll go edit for six hours, get up out of my chair, stretch, pad up, go ride the skate park, come back and I'll have totally clear totally mind. Different. I'll be like, whoa, like, okay, 
I was thinking too clearly about like how loud this one sound was. Like mm. the overall project's looking good. Like I'm I'm much more optimistic now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's so helpful for that, and just also too like being involved with everyone. Like I think like particularly with Jackson, like he and I ride together 99% of the time and shoot 1% of the time. Right. And like, that's a very healthy thing. Like, yeah, yeah. because we're so much on the same page of how we want to portray his riding, um, what he can accomplish. Like we dig together all the time. So like when we're building features for projects, it's like, we're just, we're on it. We have the same mentality. Um, and then when we're shooting, it's just like, okay, just like a streamlined process. Yeah. Yeah, being involved on the bike has been super helpful for sure. Cool, amazing, dude. Dude, I'm so stoked for you. Genuinely, you can tell. <laughs> like, like I said, when we started recording this, you you like a different guy. You are super, <laughs> not in a bad way. Like maybe quieter, a little less confident, but now you seem to have uh, you've blossomed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm stoked for you. Genuinely, thank you. Yeah, it just comes with working through all of life's. Yeah trials and tribulations it does, I it does, it does, which it, it's it does. hard to be like yeah like trials like i mean life's hard sometimes but it's like realistic we're making bike videos and riding bikes every day it's you know you can't take yourself that seriously no nah, nah. we're all just groms having fun so it's so good true. So true. <laughs> all right man so uh the film where where can people find it i mean that anyone you want to say thank you to like all that sort of stuff and then we'll uh wrap this thing up if that's cool yeah, yeah easy um, so yeah, uh, Tribe, latest project, be available Vimeo, Wednesday, February 26th. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all uploaded, ready to go, just got to toss Is it password. weird, like, waiting? Oh, yeah, it's it's a good feeling, though, when you Is take it? the path <laughs> off. You're like, Ooh. And it's nice, too, like, also having, like, people post about it who you wouldn't think. Like, even when the trailer dropped, I made this trailer only for Instagram, like I like that's why it was 55 seconds and I put it on Vimeo just kind of like cuz I was like all right it'll just be good to have on there but then it's sick like seeing who picks it up because Vimeo is a sweet analytic system ah. so you can see the exact links where your views are coming from okay. so there's like all these mountain bike news networks who are just like who I can like the trailer obviously is not a lot of views but for Vimeo I kind of view views a little bit differently because it's a bit more competitive um yeah the trailer got like 6,000 views or something like the passion trailer got like 7,000 first week but all of my attention was going to that like this one I was like okay well it's post on Instagram whatever but it's cool seeing like oh pink bike posted it got x amount of views or mountain bike blank posted right right it's cool when you like drop the password off the film and you like you post about it on Instagram but you have no idea like thankfully now with like kind of like what you're saying with like the cast of the film I suppose yes. like yeah. there's enough random people who are interested in it that they'll post about it so I'm like it's exciting like dropping the dropping the password and seeing how people let it go and you're just like okay well I mean who cares like I could get 2,000 views I'd still be stoked like all the friends are hyped on it like mm-hmm. I've had I've learned a bunch making it but like it's not about views or anything. It's more about the process for for me, I think. But so, dude, I'm exactly the same. We've kind of got the same outlook on it. I think you know, I I'd, I'd be doing this even if it wasn't like for views. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah, enjoy talking 100%. to people. I enjoy you know meeting you and whatever. So I'd be doing this anyway. But it is nice yeah. when you see that and you're like, oh, like you know, X amount of thousands of people, and you're like, wow, it's a, they're just numbers on a screen. But it's really cool that you know that you've sort of like so many people have watched or listened to something that you've made it's really cool yeah yeah no doubt it's a trip um, so yeah it's gonna be live on there and yeah that just thanks to obviously like brett for letting me live at the house uh ethan for letting me edit here been super grateful for that um chase for letting me live in the basement while i was filming at highland david for being willing to drive 10 hours to pick me up from the airport and be down to film um, Matt for getting me, Matt's right here actually, getting me involved What's with up? everything with Brett and that kind of West Coast crew. And I mean, I could say thank you for days like Reed for making the first mountain bike project I ever did with me. Like yeah. the thanks could go on forever. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful for all my friends presenting me with these incredible opportunities. And yeah, I'm just trying to make the most out of them for sure. So good, dude. And you're on Instagram at Peter Jameson Media. Uh, yeah, and website also, and stuff. Yeah, like Instagram at Peter Jameson Media, and I've been doing a lot of riding stuff too. I have another Instagram just at Peter Jameson. Okay. Um, so that's where I just post all riding. Um, 
Uh, so Your yeah. Instagram's then... nice, man. Like, it's good. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's, I like it. I'm into it. Everything's like, everyone out there, go check out Peter's Instagram because everything's like super uniformed, all in the same like size. Everything's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an OCD nightmare, but it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, really cool. some people like it. Some people don't. I got a pretty funny message like when Instagram started that dark mode Yeah. because I do the white borders. And someone was like, dude, I only follow mountain bikers and you're ruining my mountain bike feed with your white borders. <laughs> just like, dude, I'm like, I've been committed to this for three years. I'm not stopping now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then website, just peterjamesonmedia.com. Uh, I just have like videos, photos. Um, I have like, I recently started, I just put like a project section on my website. So if you want to like, kind of, you mentioned the Cerrone shoot yep. or any of the other shoots that I do that you see on my Instagram, you mm-hmm. can click on the project section and find the collections of those shoots. So if you're curious, like, okay, well, Fox posted these two photos from the shoot. I wonder like what else they shot. Yeah. Um, there are other photographers who do that. And I like Ian Collins and Toby Cowley are two like of my biggest inspirations from the photography side. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, I geek out so hard when they post full projects on their website. Like I just get so psyched seeing yeah. it all. Um, so I took a bit of inspo from those guys and tossed that up on there. So if anyone is ever curious about like what else is shot other than what what gets posted from mm. a shoot, um, I just toss a bunch of the images up on the project section now. Amazing! So pretty excited about that for sure. All right, man. Well, uh, let's uh, let's keep in touch. Obviously, let's keep on at Matt McDuff. There's a podcast coming from Matt McDuff soon. Yes. And if everybody keeps messaging McDuff him like they did before, name. like keep on at him, he's gonna drop one. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Dude, the Matt McDuff show, I think, is the name. Yes, the because Matt McDuff show. He has, oh yeah, he got a, a really good intro. Everything I've, you know, I heard yeah. one years ago. Now, a year and yeah. a half ago. So yeah, keep on at Matt McDuff. Let's make this happen. You and Matt now should riff it out. Get that one up Dude. there as well. Promote the film. <laughs> make it happen. Dude, <laughs> I'm messaging sure, him as soon as we hang up I'm messaging him I'm gonna be like, come on, dude, it's time. Dude, I can just get him to hop in the room, man. <laughs> all right it's been a blast dude honestly the film's gonna be a huge success thank you so much for doing this again anything i can ever do to help you just ask it's no issue at all and uh, everyone go download the film go watch it and let people know hit peter up let me know the whole thing let's do it dude thank you thank you so much man appreciate it all right folks there you have it peter jameson what a human being If you haven't already, go watch the film, share it with your friends. I hope you guys agree that um, Peter deserves this. So please just share it. You've no idea how much just a share and some positive words sent his way goes. Um, It goes a long way, trust me. Uh, Thanks again for listening. Thank you to everybody out there who helps make this podcast happen, especially Natural Leaf CBD. Naturalleafcbd.co.uk. Enter the promo code HKTPOD10. We'll get you 10% off everything on the store works for making the most badass pressure washer in the game and of course sacks underwear for keeping the boys where they need to be hookitproducts.co.uk is uh is my store so go check that out too you can get a load of mountain bike goodies on there and most importantly thank you to you guys for listening um if you uh if you want to share the episode on your social media leave an itunes review that also goes a long way and you might just win yourself a set of sacks underwear for your time and uh and stoke so that's it have a great rest of your week peace out enjoy <laughs>